Right, hello everybody and welcome to a very, very quick uh, online video showing our new server cache product. A lot of people have been asking about what it does, how it works in their environment. And I thought the best way to do it is actually show a very, very simple install running inside of VMware. You go through some of the features and functions and quickly get a few people up to speed with the GUI. So what I've done is really simply created a virtual machine um, running on our test rig. And basically um, that's running a copy of Windows 2012 64-bit, pretty straightforward with a local uh, disk drive connected to that. Um, literally what I'm actually going to do is just quickly get onto the machine now and log on. And basically just go through um, how we're going to actually install this. Uh, so I said before, we've got our local system disk, which is drive letter C, and we've got a disk that's been created inside of a, um, VMware, presented as just a VMDK, but it's a local spinning disk, and this is drive letter E, nothing really on it at the moment. So it's for simplicity points of view, so I'm just going to go and literally show you how to download and run the software install. And at the same time, what I've also done is some benchmarking. I've just run a really simple test against that drive, just showing some sequential 4K, 512K and 4K with a Q depth of 32 across that really um, single spinning drive. So what we do, really straightforward, is go to obviously download the software. We run as administrator. And it comes up and says, yep, we're going to install this product called Server Cache. And literally, we hit next. Like all good people, we always read the license agreement. And you can see I can read exceptionally quick. And I do agree. And then literally, we can put the location of where that server cache software is going to be installed. Obviously, the usual place, program files, HGST, Verdant server cache. I'll do it, create it. The next thing as well is you can choose a port number that you're actually going to do maintenance and admin. So what it does is it creates a web service on the, on the host, on this server, which you can use for admining the uh, the server cache. So I'm actually going to put it at one, uh, 9001, uh, and I'm going to make sure that we create obviously a firewall exception so we can actually get onto that as well. So let's hit next. Again, you can also log on using things like LDAP. Um, if you had some sort of LDAP configuration with some locally stored usernames and passwords, you can configure that to run inside this environment. And again, if you want to use things like SSL encryption and certificate certification, you can also do that. Again, we're not just for simplicity today. Again, it will then create the usual things, folders and some menus. And this is the start menu. Uh, here, very straightforward. You can rename it something if you didn't want it to be called Virulent Server Cache. And then usual thing, create the icons. And, uh, and you could say, actually, I just want to install it. It's on a machine that's standalone. It's not connected to the internet, so don't notify me about any updates. So we'll leave that ticked off at the moment. So really straightforward. It's going to install. You can see how quickly that is. And it comes up with a nice brand new GUI on the left uh, icon on the left hand side here. And there's here says launch server cache configuration page. So we're going to do that. And what it's going to do is basically go on and say very, very straightforward um, GUI that it's connected to. And it's come here and it says it doesn't support Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox. So what we're going to do is take this. And this, uh, rather than using Internet Explorer here, is what I'm going to do is use 192.168.10.216, and I'm going to connect to that just using a copy of Chrome. So let's just do that, and we'll do it as 9001. So I'm actually going to go back here, connect on my Chrome, and it's 192.168.10.216, colon slash 9001. And here we go, and literally it's come up and it says server cache for Windows. Oh, it looks good. It seems to uh, tell me that it's up and running. So the password and administrator, there we go, administrator. And this is the local Windows 2012 admin account that you've done the installation um, that we're going to log in as. It has to be an admin account. Um, so it says here, welcome to server cache. Please configure server cache to complete the installation. So any changes that we do inside this environment, we're going to have to reboot the server to allow it to be seen. Um, so literally, we're going to hit, yep, we're going to do this. And literally what it's come up with is a pretty straightforward uh, menu. It says cache not installed. Well, 
I haven't actually set anything up here. And the key thing here is to look at the available drives and it's actually positioned at drive letter E, which was that drive inside Windows 2012, that local disk. And it says available drives for caching. So let's actually look at what else it says here as well. So the first thing really we're gonna do is we're gonna think about the cache mode. And this again, you'd use your local systems engineer to uh, decide which mode is best or you could try it based on your application. The key thing that I'm showing today, which a lot of people didn't know, um, is we would stick it into right back. And then literally there's an option here, which I think is really, really clever. It's a RAM cache only. And I'm gonna take that function. So what this is gonna do is literally gonna put it back through right through mode, but it's gonna put data as it goes into the RAM cache. So basically, we're using the local Windows 2012 server's memory. That's not flash or local disk, it's memory to accelerate this. So what I'm gonna do, that's fine. Let's enable RAM cache. And then literally, if you look here as well, we can actually specify how much memory that we want. So let's put 2048, really small. Uh, and again, this is just the usual amount of reserved RAM that this uh, cache is gonna use. The other thing that's just interesting, we also do a thing called uh, sequential detection. And again, there's a lot more information about what that feature does inside the documents, and I'm not gonna really cover that today. So let me just do a save. Um, oh, oh, and we've also got to select the drive <laughs> that we're gonna accelerate, which is a, a good start as well. Um, so let's just quickly do that. And here's our drive letter E, the local drive, or the volume, uh, the physical drive. So let's just quickly click this one. There it is there. And literally, as I said before, RAM cache 2048, really small. And that's the drive we're going to select. And literally what this is going to do is save the configuration. Now it's going to put it in right through mode and go from there. Okay, and it says really straightforward. Configuration saved, changes will take effect only after the system restarts. So that's actually done. And it's showing here, and if you look at my details page, it's given me all the details around the drive itself. So the next question is we need to reboot it, which is obviously really important. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go back to this environment. This is actually where it's been run from. And what we're gonna do is just simply come over here, power, and then what we'll do is do a restart. And it is planned. That's gonna restart for us. Okay, now the server's rebooted, we can actually log back in to server cache. And so let's quickly log back in. And what's really, really good is the first thing it says is cache online and it's active. It's telling me it's accelerated this local disk um, and it's gonna give me some details around performance, some tabs in a second and the available drives as well. So let's actually have a look at the cache configuration. So yep, there it is. There's our capacity, our local drive. It's RAM cache only. Again, you could add um, SSDs here to uh, accelerate this as well. Um, and again, we're not using the warming cache and we've reserved it with uh, two gigs of DRAM, which is really important. The other thing is the performance tab. And we're gonna quickly there, so we're gonna leave this page. And this is showing me um, literally IOPS, read write throughput, latency response time um, in terms of read and writes as well. And you can notice it's microseconds because we're using DRAM on here as well. Um, again, you can save these out to a CSV file. Um, so if you're doing some testing, you can do that. So let's go back now into Windows 2012, and then we can format up the drive. Uh, this is now accelerated because obviously you, um, the drive needs to be is empty, it's clean. We're going to format it up. You'd put on your data that you want to accelerate through the cache from fresh. So let's. Go back there now, and let's log in to the server. And here we are, back on the server that's running server cache. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the local drive. And you'll see now that a drive letter has vanished because server cache has grabbed that. The other thing you can see here as well is it's telling me it's running and the uh, software is installed. So what we're going to do is literally go to disk management. And it says, oh, there's that 40 gig address, uh, disk that we had on before. So let's just add it back in. So that's now going through the cache into RAM. Let's format it up. Again, the defaults are fine. So that's actually now formatting that local disk at the back end and it's positioned at 38.87 gig um, through there. Next thing we want to do is maybe just run a quick test to see if it's actually going through it, see if we can get some graphing on it. So what I'm going to do is run Crystal Report again, and this is just a very simple uh, load testing tool. So let's just point it there, file size, and we'll kick that off. And that's now going to start doing some work through uh, the server cache to the local disk at the back end. And then what we should see as the workload starts is the cache starts to get populated and instantly there you can see the throughput is really, really high. That's going through DRAM. Um, it's over 1.7 gigabytes uh, a second. On the right, it's back out. It's even actually improved the right performance on certain things. So you'll see this starting to run. And as we go back to our server cache page, you can actually now start to see the IOPS. You can see the read and write throughput, and you can also see the response time as it's being taken through the cache. So really straightforward. Server cache made easy. We just set up a local virtualized disk inside VMware just for this test, but you'd normally have it on a physical server. It's actively running. We're getting performance off that and it's actually going through DRAM on that. It'd be nice to do a much longer test, um, but have a go with this technology. Um, the only caveat is it can't be used on a Microsoft cluster. It's only back down to a single disk or a single RAID group um, around that local disk. Um, but for accelerating things like SQL, for accelerating things like um, web services, for even things like SharePoint Exchange, you could do some testing to see how you got on with this as well.